Welcome to your bonus live pronunciation training as part of the Advanced Pronunciation Accelerator program. If you're watching this later on YouTube, make sure you go to the link in the video notes so you can join us for our next live. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello in the comments. I'll try to pause every couple of words to see if you have any questions or if I can do anything to help clarify any of the pronunciation. The one thing that I have loved about the feedback that you've given me is that all of the updates that I made last month, you have loved having more C2 level. The problem with C2 level, I find that most people try to focus on the grammar. The C2 level grammar often comes across as overly formal and conversational English. However, I do love the vocabulary. So I put together a list of 15 words for today, words that I actually use that I think would be beneficial and fun for you to practice. Let's jump right on in. Our first word is eloquent. Eloquent. So it's eh, like elephant. Ella. La. So even though it looks like elo, ella, la. It's that schwa sound. Eloquent. I remember I'm pausing it so you can practice. Eloquent. So this means expressing yourself fluently, persuasively, and gracefully. I love this word. I use this a lot. I think it's a great way to compliment someone. So for example, you know what? Before I give you more examples, <laughs> let's practice this one. Her eloquent speech at the conference captivated the audience and left a lasting impression. So I think this is a beautiful compliment when someone is really well-spoken. Um, I find that if you're watching speeches, uh, oftentimes, most if not all TED Talk speakers are very eloquent. So this is a beautiful compliment for someone. Now, noticing the speech pattern. So here, I'm going to make this larger. Notice where we pause. Because remember that, in fact, I'll make myself small here. Remember that when you're, you're speaking English, we speak in chunks. So it's not about one breath and going through the entire sentence. So her eloquent speech at the conference, here you can take a little breath, captivated the audience. Here I would micro pause if you wanted to breathe or needed to, that would be another point, and left a lasting impression. So notice it's not her eloquent speech at the conference captivated the audience and left a lasting impression. Technically, that's correct English, correct pronunciation, but that's not natural. I don't want you to sound like a robot, and especially if you're using more eloquent English, it's about the delivery. That's what helps you sound more confident as well. So let's try one more time. And then when you're re-watching this, because I'll put this video in your pronunciation course, and I'll have the resources there, you can pause it as many times as you need. Her eloquent speech at the conference captivated the audience and left a lasting impression. Okay, good. And it's okay to, like here I exaggerated the pauses just a little bit. Go ahead and do that as well. Because when you're speaking in real life, your heart rate is usually going to be a little bit higher. That adrenaline or anxiety or both <laughs> will cause you to speak a little bit faster. So training slower with more clarity is only going to help you. The next word we have for today is meticulous. Now for the pronunciation, meticulous, let me make myself bigger here. M, not me, but m, meti, meti, q. So here's like cute. Because if you say meticulo, meticulos, that's going to sound mispronounced, but it'll also give a stronger accented pronunciation. So meti, 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 q, q, meticulous meticulous. And I love this word. And honestly, I'll probably say that a lot. It's not because I don't mean it. It's because I genuinely put together a list of 15 C2 level words that I love. All right. So meticulous, this means showing great attention to detail, thoroughness, and precision. So notice that when you get into the C2 level, even the definitions are more elevated. If the definitions feel confusing or you don't feel comfortable with it, I would recommend either look up another definition or look up examples. 
through examples, you can learn contextually because you are not a student. There is no test. <laughs> so don't obsess about the impractical part. Really focus on the real life component. How can you use it? How can you understand it? So let's take a look at an example. Her meticulous planning and organization skills made the event run smoothly without any issues. So I can notice the chunks. So here, I would say I pause a little bit. Her meticulous planning and organization skills. So there, and notice that I dropped the D. So it's not planning and organization, but rather the reduction. Her meticulous planning and organization skills do a tiny inhale. Remember, that's the trick for fluidity and for fluent breathing. It's not inhale, exhale. It's a small mouth inhale. It's going to feel unnatural when you practice it, but then as you get used to it, it, it makes a huge difference because having that regular intake of oxygen lowers the heart rate, but it also gives you the energy to speak in a more natural cadence. So her meticulous planning and organization skills made the event run smoothly without any issues. So play around with the intonation here. Notice what I did with the end, run smoothly, inhale, without any issues. So to get natural intonation, it's about playing around with it and then figuring out which emphasis is gonna give you the message. Where do you, there's no right or wrong. It's what's right for your context and for your situation. So let's practice again, meticulous. In fact, tell me in the comments, are you a meticulous person? Are you detail oriented? Or are you not? <laughs> Maybe your partner in life is the meticulous one and you're the more creative or, or silly one. The next one, invariably. So this one, especially with, with vowel sounds, your mouth might want to revert back to the your association with the native sounds that you have. So this is going to take some practice, which is why I always have the IPA as well. It's a nice reminder. Even if you don't know what the symbols mean, it can help you see what they're not. So for this one, in, in so it's not invadia. Your mouth doesn't open as much for the A. Invariably. Invariably. Good. So this means in a way that is constant, unchanging, or always the same. Invariably. Inve so we're going to keep it small. Invariably. Now by now you might realize that your shoulders are a little bit tense. Relax the shoulders, okay? And now let's put it in context. The quality of their products has invariably met our high standards over the years. The quality of their products, this is where you would small inhale, the quality of their products has invariably met our high standards over the years. So again, the chunking, right? It's not the full sentence. Really, this breaks down into three separate sections. Two, if you don't count the first inhale, two opportunities to breathe. When you're giving a presentation, when you're having a conversation, when you're in a meeting where all eyes are on you, breathing is essential. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to feel like you're drowning when you speak English. And over time, you're, you'll create that association that speaking English equals anxiety. And a lot of it has to do with, at this point in your English, it's not about your nerves about English. That's been a misassociation that's held over from the beginning of your training. Now that you're an intermediate to advanced, you want to let go of that and you want to identify why that persists. And 95, 99% of the time with people that I work with, it's because they're not breathing properly to help them feel confident. And let's check out the comments over here. I'm testing out some new features. Yes. Okay, so now I can put your comments on the screen. So you used to be more meticulous, and now you're allowing to go with the flow sometimes, especially having a new baby, right? <laughs> it is so hard to go with the flow. I imagine I don't have kids, but seeing my friends with kids, 
you have to go with the flow. There are so many things you can't control. Excellent. All right, let's check out what our next word is. Voracious. Oh, this is a good one. I think they're all good, but these in particular. Voracious. So let's check out the pronunciation. So it's not vo, vora. It's going to be smaller. V, vre, a, like day. Your mouth is out. Voracious. Like gracious. Voracious. So it's not co's, but sh, sh, shus. Good. And this means having an insatiable appetite or consuming large quantities, but not always food. So the example I have for you is to show you that you can have a voracious appetite, but we use it, oftentimes we use it outside of the context of food, which I find really interesting. And this is the difference between studying for an academic purpose, where if you just take the literal definition, you might miss out on other opportunities to actually use it. And that's where the examples come in. So one more time, v, v, so not vo, v, voracious. Good. Let's take a look at the example. She has a voracious appetite for reading, often finishing multiple books in a week. This is exactly what I was talking about. So it's a voracious appetite. These are two words that we associate with food, but here we're talking about reading. Let's try again. She has a voracious appetite for reading, often finishing multiple books in a week. So right to here, we've got those two chunks, which it's easier when you have commas, but you'll get more comfortable with it as you go. Uh, some linking here, has a, so it's not has, the S in has sounds like a Z, and that's going to link to the vowel sound. She has a, has a, she has a voracious, a, voracious, a, there's no pause. We have the consonant and a vowel sound. She has a voracious appetite for, instead of for, 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 for reading. And remember, to say for reading is not incorrect, but with the American accent, we do reduce for to fur when it's in this context, but never the number. The number is always O, oh, four. Often, the T, we eat it here, so it's not off 10. Often finishing multiple books in, uh, books in, uh. remember, connected speech will help your speech sound faster, but it doesn't mean you have to say it faster. Books in a week. Excellent. Now, I don't know about you. Let me know in the comments. Um, for me, I'm, I'm all or nothing. I go through phases where I'm not reading anything. And then as soon as the voracious appetite kicks in, <laughs> I'll read like five books in a week. Usually like I'll spend my whole weekend reading whenever I get in, in the zone. So let me know in the comments, are you reading anything interesting? I know Mian, you've read the whole Harry Potter series, which is amazing. Are you reading anything currently? Oh, I have no, I don't know if you see the thumbs up. I don't know if that was somebody, one of you or me. I'm still getting used to this software, so I really like it. Next word, love this one, pragmatic. So here you have that nasal A, pra, eh, eh, eh. prag, prag, pragma, pragmatic. Not ma-tic, but meh, pragmatic. Now here the emphasis on pra pragma I, I put the emphasis on the middle syllable pragmatic. Okay, this means dealing with problems in a sensible and practical way. I love it because I find that I try to be <laughs> very pragmatic. So it means being logical here, dealing with things in a sensible way. Let's take a look at the example. The pragmatic approach to solving the budget crisis involved cutting unnecessary expenses without sacrificing essential services. So notice the pausing. Uh, something here that I find even at the higher levels people will mispronounce is crisis. So because it looks a lot like crisis if you're if you speak Spanish. So it's cry like crying crisis sis like sister. Cry sister. <laughs> I don't know, imagine hugging crisis. So again, here, the pragmatic approach to solving the budget crisis, inhale, mouth inhale, 
involved. So when you're doing the inhale technique, you're going to inhale through your mouth. And then as you're speaking, that's the exhale. That's why you don't have to do because then you're starting from an oxygen deficit. So just a tiny inhale involved cutting unnecessary expenses without sacrificing essential services. And notice the body language without my head almost instinctually went left and right. So body language can also help you convey the message and make you feel really confident. Oh, you're reading Percy Jackson <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> okay. I love the Percy Jackson books. Um, he has other series. So if you couldn't get into the character and the plot of Percy Jackson, um, cause I did the same thing. I gave that one up and I started reading his other series, the, the Neptune one and the one, the Egyptian one with the twins. And I, I got really into those two series. So whenever you have an author that you want to get into, I say play around. If it's because you're busy, because you have a child, <laughs> you know what? Read to the baby, <laughs> even though she can't understand. Having a baby has built in time where you're like exhausted and you have to sit by the baby and maybe watch him sleep. So that's a great time to read out loud in English. They're not going to judge you. They can't understand you in your native language. So that's a great time to explore reading out loud. Now here, we're going to take a quick break. So we've gone through five of the 15 words. Something that I wanted to show you is how to use ChatGPT because it's not just about getting examples. You really want to refine it. Now the, the font, it's a little too small here, but for those of you in the program, I'll put this in the comment section and in the resources because you want to be specific. For example, here, it's not just about asking for 10 sentences with a word. I specifically said, use B1 to C1 English level with a conversational tone. I'm a software engineer and want to use the word during meetings. Give it context so you can, this is like having your own English teacher and researcher and assistant. So the more specific you get, the more bespoke to you and your real life experiences, You'll get sentences that you can actually not just practice, but you'll feel really comfortable using them. So get like, this is specific, this prompt, but get even more specific. <laughs> it's really interesting how it takes the input and, and how amazing the, the output is with these things. So totally take advantage of it. And again, if you're in the pronunciation program, I'll make sure to get copy and paste a few examples of prompts that you can use. Next word is exacerbate. So this one, it looks like X, but notice the IPA, it's actually G, G, exa, exa, kind of like exactly. It's not X, actly. It's not X, a, exacer. And the C sounds like an S. Exacerbate. The E at the end is silent. Repeat again exacerbate. Good. And again, this is where it's helpful because I, I look at lists of C2 words. A lot of them I don't use and I love being eloquent. <laughs> so vocabulary for me is really just something so delicious that you can enhance your, your speaking skills, especially when you have a voracious appetite for English. Um, but knowing the words that are the most useful and the ones that are actually used by native speakers, not just in like highly academic settings. So that's what I try to do. I try to look at a really long list and take out the ones that I know I use conversationally. So this one means to make a problem bad, a bad situation or negative feeling worse. Okay, I'm sure you can think of a million ways to use this word. Let's take a look at this example. Trying to solve the problem without proper information could exacerbate the situation. So notice the breath there. I'm exaggerating it so you know where it is and you can practice it. Relax your shoulders. Trying to solve the problem without proper information could exacerbate the situation. Good. And notice how the second time I changed the way I emphasized could. So play around with how you say different words until you find the one that really fits what you envision would be the, the best fit for your conversation. Let's move on to the next C2 level word, nonchalant. 
Now, this one is borrowed from the French, which is why it sounds Frenchy, if you will. Non sha, not cha, but sha. Non sha, sha. Small. Your your jaw is not going to drop for ah. So nonchalant. It opens a little more for the second day. Nonchalant. Good. This means feeling or appearing casually calm and relaxed, not displaying anxiety or enthusiasm. So just plain nonchalant is eh. <laughs> without using any words. Eh. Despite the intense competition, he appeared nonchalant as if the pressure didn't phase him. So appeared not worried. Right, so nonchalant. Despite the intense competition, notice even emphasizing intense because it's the meaning of the word. So have fun with this. Despite the intense competition, he appeared nonchalant as if the pressure didn't phase him. So here we have two opportunities to inhale after competition and before as if. When you're doing these, these examples, for example, this one, I'm I'm imagining, I'm thinking after watching the Super Bowl, I'm imagining I'm a I'm a journalist, you know, narrating the, the game. So you want to get really dramatic like they do. Despite the intense competition, he appeared nonchalant as if the pressure didn't phase him. Have fun. Sometimes when you take yourself out of it and you pretend to be something else or someone else, in this case, a journalist uh, at ESPN, it lets you let go of any of the preconceived notions that you have about yourself and your English, and it can unlock. Sometimes it unlocks certain sounds and muscles that you were holding on before. Plus, it makes it fun. The next one, prolific. Now, this one, and, and even me looking it up for the IPA, some websites said the schwa. Some websites said pro, the OU IPA. So this is where you want to, there's no set correct pronunciation sometimes. It can depend on usage. It can depend on country or region. So based on this, I saw the two options. I'm like, right, number one, how do I say it? And then number two, how do others say it? So I looked up some examples. And in my opinion, the way that I say it and that I think sounds the most natural, instead of prolific, prolific. Both are correct. So this means producing works in great abundance. Prolific. Prolific. If you say prolific, okay, it's still considered correct. But if I'm with the American accent, prolific is going to sound the most natural. Let's check out the example. The prolific author has written over 30 novels in her career, earning critical acclaim and numerous awards. Try. All right, the prolific author has written over, now written, that can be pausing for pronunciation there. Written is probably the easier way to say it, but with the American pronunciation, we often say written, kind of like mountain. So that's gonna be a glottal stop. The prolific author has written, you know what? I'm gonna make a masterclass to add to the course for that because that is something that causes a lot of confusion. And it just takes some, some muscle work with knowing how to shut your throat here. The quickest way to, you can do it, and I'll show you. So when you say, if you mess up, you're like, uh-oh. If you don't call, if you don't pause your throat here, it's going to sound like, uh. So, uh-oh. That's stop. That's what you're going to use for written. Mountain. So it's a throat stop and then the end sound. But I'll make a whole masterclass for you because it's worth the practice. The prolific author has written over 30 novels in her career, earning critical acclaim and numerous awards. And here you can say and numerous awards, but as you can hear when I read it naturally, I use a reduced form and numerous. So the D is reduced. And honestly, I really admire authors um, who are so prolific. I'll see some of these authors like J.D. Robb or you have uh, all the, the mystery writers and they have so many books. <laughs> I'm like, how? We have the same hours in a day. It, it's very uh, impressive. Next one, profound. So this is similar where we have pro, 
So we have prolific, prolific, or profound, profound. Same thing. When I looked at the IPA for this, both were available or both were shown to be correct. With the American accent, I find that the schwa sound is the most used. So instead of profound, it's not wrong, but it sounds more natural. Profound, profound. This means having deep meaning, significance, or impact. Profound. The film's ending left the audience in profound contemplation of what it means to truly live. Oh, here's another one of my favorite C2 words. Maybe I'll add this for another list for another uh, live training. Contemplation. To contemplate. To think. There are so many delicious words for thinking. Contemplate. Uh, to ponder. So these are ways that, that your English sounds more elevated, but you can do it in a way that that fits so you don't sound like you're a pretentious professor of English. You know, you want to use it in a way that that's genuine to your personality. Let's try again. The film's ending left the audience in profound contemplation of what it means to truly live. Good to remember to pause. And even the essence of this sentence, you do want to pause because it is something, you're talking about something deep. The film's ending, okay, if you have to pretend to be something to loosen up, pretend you're a film critic and you're talking about the, the seriousness, the beauty of this film. The film's ending left the audience in profound contemplation of what it means to truly live right? <laughs> so be dramatic. When you're silly and you're dramatic in your practice, I'm telling you, your whole body changes because it takes the pressure off of you being you and needing to be perfect. So these are really exciting ways to find your yourself. By Oddly, by being somebody else, you can find yourself in your English. Because then you realize like, oh, that doesn't feel natural. Or, oh, that part felt kind of cool. And so it helps you unlock the essence of you so that you can convey that, you can be that in English. Next one, cognizant, cognizant. Okay, this one's interesting. We're going to break it down. Ca, 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 cognizant. Now, even though it's a Z, I find when I pronounce it, it's like a Z, but it's still a little bit of an S. So not a Z, super Z buzz kind of thing. It's a little bit lighter. This means being aware of having knowledge or understanding of something, to be cognizant. All right, let's take a look at the example. Being cognizant of cultural differences is crucial when working with international clients. All right, so here you want to breathe after differences. So being cognizant of cultural differences is, now notice that the breath does break up the connected speech. Because here you might think, okay, you've got the S and that's going to link to the vowel. But this is where connected speech is adaptable. It adapts to the sentence structure, to the delivery. So, being, so I find the breath is more important than the linking in this part. Being cognizant of cultural differences is crucial when working with international clients. Now, I say international. I eat that first T because it's more of an Americanized accent. If you say international, it's not incorrect. So both are okay. Americans tend to gloss over that one. International, kind of like internet. I don't say internet, internet connection. Now here, let's take a little break. We have five words left. I wanted to show you one of my favorite resources. And I think that two of you in here are, I know I've definitely talked to you, Mian, about this one. <laughs> this resource is awesome for pronunciation examples. So I love Yulish because you can also pick the accent. Let me make it a little bit bigger so you can see it. And if you're in the program, I'll make sure to send the link to you under the, the video resource when I post this. So this is awesome because you put the word or phrase. You can also put idioms and expressions here, not just individual words. Uh, this is great for phrasal verbs as well. You're going to write that in there at the top and select the American accent. You can select the other ones, but you want to focus on this one if you're in this kind of practice. And it's going to give you clips from YouTube, usually hundreds or thousands of clips from YouTube of examples of the word being used. 
So this is awesome for you to train your ear to see how people actually pronounce it because sometimes, like I showed you, it's a little bit different or there are some options. Profound, profound. Listen to some of these, see how they say it and see which delivery you, you like best. So this is an awesome way to train your ear. However, I don't want you to just listen. After you see the little phrase and you see at the bottom in yellow, it shows you the, the caption, pause it and try to repeat after them in their intonation. So this is gonna help you explore because some of them are TED Talks, some are interviews, some are vloggers. So you're going to explore different intonations and that's going to flex the muscle so that then you can choose the one that feels best for you. I love this website. All right, next one, superfluous. Super, super, superflu, like flu, the past tense, superfluous. So us. Your turn. Good. Superfluous. This means exceeding what is necessary, excessive or redundant. And notice again, once you're at this level, even the definitions have really good words. So make sure you're reading the definitions out loud, getting the mouth muscles accustomed to reading words at this level. Now for the example, her explanations were concise and to the point. Avoiding superfluous information. This is fantastic because this also <laughs> helps me remind you that American communication is very concise. Um, I've mentioned this before in other videos that I've made about leadership communication, but even conversationally, Americans tend to talk in bullet points. We always try to do the main point first and then the details. And this is the opposite to other cultures like Spanish speakers. Um, a lot of European cultures and Asian cultures are similar in that it's all about the story and the detail first and then the main point. So it takes a while to, to practice flipping that get to the point first, and then details. You don't want to have any superfluous information. Let's try this again. Her explanations were concise and to the point. Avoiding superfluous information. Good. Now remember, the, the breath work is going to feel uncomfortable and weird at first. Practice it. It's not inhale, exhale. It's a small but it makes a huge difference in fluency and fluidity. The next word, incontrovertible. Incontrovertible. Now notice here, sometimes the IPA says one thing, but when I use this word, my emphasis is on incontrovertible. So this is where you wanna practice what you see, go to Youglish, see how native speakers are actually using the word, and it can help you be more accurate which when you know you're more accurate, you usually feel more confident. Incontrovertible. This means indisputable, impossible to question or doubt. The DNA evidence presented in court was incontrovertible, leading to a swift conviction. So again, maybe here you wanna pretend that you're a, a journalist, you're sharing the news. The DNA evidence presented in court was incontrovertible leading to a swift conviction. Okay, I'm actually gonna show this comment here. Yes, so it, it's definitely a hard word. When, when words are difficult, this one especially because it has so many syllables. Don't try to rush through the syllables. When a, when a word is this big, you need to take your time. Your instinct is gonna be to say it faster because you think if I say it faster, it's gonna sound more like a native speaker and nobody will notice if I mess up. It's okay. Be willing to mess up because the clear, the, the more clearly that you speak, the more people can understand you. It gives them time to kind of understand what you're saying. It gives your mouth time to make all of the sounds. And most importantly, when you're not rushing through it, then they'll be able to understand the context. So even if you mispronounce something, the context of your story will still be clear. So again, the DNA evidence presented in court was incontrovertible, leading to a swift conviction. Sounds like all the, the cop shows that I watch. And the next one, enigmatic. Enigmatic. Again, 
enigmatic. Good. And notice the T is not enigmatic. It's going to be that TD, that flap T. Enigmatic. This means mysterious, puzzling, or difficult to understand. The Mona Lisa's enigmatic smile has intrigued art enthusiasts for centuries. And it really has. Sometimes I think it's a bit overrated. I saw this in Paris. It is a teeny tiny painting. <laughs> but, you know, it's a classic. Repeat after me. The Mona Lisa's enigmatic smile has intrigued art enthusiasts for centuries. Good. Take your time. There are a lot of big words here. Intrigued. Enthusiasts centuries. So take your time with it. Really enjoy it. Savor it, especially when you're in this safe space of practice. If you practice rushed, if you practice confused and not feeling confident, your speaking in real life is going to be even worse. Um, it's going to exacerbate the problems. Instead, take your time. <sighs> Remember, no matter how slowly you practice, because of adrenaline and anxiety, it's going to be faster in real life. So take your time because that's going to help offset that and help you sound and feel better when you actually use it. All right, let's see here. The next one, we're almost finished. So hang in there. Nebulous. Ne, ne, nebia, bia. It's like, be like cute. It's that you, you. Nebulous. So not lows, but us, lus, nebulous. This means unclear, vague, or hazy, lacking definite form or boundaries. The example, the concept of happiness can be quite nebulous as it means different things to different people. I cannot agree with this more. I was literally debating <laughs> the, the merits of happiness and how we overuse the word happy in in modern society in a way that I think is detrimental to, to mental health. So see, conversations like those, and I know a lot of you love, you have a lot of deep thought, and whether it's about the concept of happiness, or if it's about the Super Bowl game, <laughs> whatever conversations you're having, uh, having the option of using C2 level vocabulary, it's like, it's like having new colors to paint with. You can paint beautiful pictures with the colors, with the English that you have, but having more, it gives you options. And some of you are, there are certain topics that you're really deep thinkers or you, you really want to share that next level of, of descriptiveness. So this can help. Let's try again. The concept of happiness can be quite nebulous as it means different things to different people. Good. And remember here, we've got some connected speech opportunities. Let's say we have concept of, so instead of concept of, concept of, it's very subtle, um, as it, so the S in at, it's, if you say ass, it's going to sound like A-S-S. So in this case, it actually sounds a little bit like a Z, as it, as it means. Now, different things to different people. Notice I don't over-articulate the T, different. So the Americans, we do reduce that a lot, different, different. All right, and the last word for today, acumen, acumen, k, k, like cute, k, acumen. The ability to make quick and accurate judgments or decisions, having keen insight. Let's check out the example. Her financial acumen allowed her to make wise investments and grow her wealth. Okay, good. Listen and try again. Her financial acumen allowed her to make wise investments and grow her wealth. So here I wanted to, to leave you with an example of how even if the speed is a little bit higher, notice the clarity. Everything is clear. Implementing connected speech and the breath work, it allows you to speak fluidly, but with maximum clarity. 
Excellent work. Thank you so much for joining me for this live training as part of your advanced pronunciation accelerator program. If you're watching this on YouTube later, check out the link in the notes to join us for our next live.